Hey guys, this is Cam that takes. Um, we're gonna be doing another solar system video. In this episode, we're gonna go over moons. Moons are objects that orbit around a planet. So we're actually just gonna go to each planet and then talk about their moons. First is Mercury. Mercury actually doesn't have any moons. It's too close to the sun's gravity, so even if it did had a moon, the sun would pull any potential moons away from Mercury because its gravitational pull isn't strong enough. Next is Venus. Venus doesn't have any moons. It's either probably because, just like Mercury, the sun would pull any potential moons away from it, or maybe it had one a long time ago, but crashed into it, causing it to not have life. Next is the Earth. As we know, the Earth has one moon, which is the moon. It's the fifth largest moon in our solar system, and it helps control Earth's ocean tides. Next is Mars. Phobos and Deimos, which are strangely both a regular shape and not round, like spheres. Compared to asteroids, they're almost identical, which means Mars probably captured them from the asteroid belt. Unlike Mars, which is a Roman name, the moons are Greek names. Phobos means fear, Deimos means terror. Next is Jupiter. 95 moons orbit around Jupiter, but there are potentially more hiding. There are so many moons, we can't go over all of them, so we'll just go over the biggest, which are named the Galilean 4. Ganymede is unique because it has a own magnetic field. It can have an internal ocean that can contain more water than all the Earth's oceans combined. It's the largest of the Galilean 4 moons. And it's the largest moon in the solar system. It's actually bigger than the planet Mercury. Callisto is the most heavily cratered object in the solar system. And it's actually slightly smaller than Mercury. Europa's surface is covered in ice, and under its icy surface, it can have an internal ocean that has twice as much water as all the Earth's oceans combined. Io is the most volcanically active object in the solar system, and the sulfur on its surface makes it colorful. Next is Saturn. Saturn has 146 moons, and already some are pan and Daphnis are shepherd moons, which means they're orbiting around the ring system of Saturn. And Titan, which is Saturn's largest moon, and it's the second largest moon in the solar system after Ganymede. And it's the only moon to have a substantial atmosphere. Its atmosphere is mostly made up of nitrogen and has small traces of methane. This atmosphere is four times as dense as the Earth's. And it can have an internal ocean of liquid, rivers of methane, and an internal ocean of water. And where there's water, there could be life. And just like Ganymede, Titan is larger than planet Mercury. And at Enceladus Southern Pole, the Cassini spacecraft found something interesting. Water vapor geysers blasting into space, so that means the moon can have an internal ocean of liquid water. So that means there could be life there too. Next is Rio, which is Saturn's second largest moon after Titan. And it can actually have three rings around it. The moon is made up of three quarters of ice and one quarter of rock. And Mimas has this huge crater from an impact that almost split the moon in two pieces. And this huge impact crater actually makes it look a lot like the Death Star from Star Wars. Next is Iapetus, which has a color pattern, one size dark and one size light, and this color pattern makes it look like a walnut. Hyperion has a flattened shape, which makes it orbit chaotically around Saturn. Next is Uranus. Uranus has 28 moons confirmed so far. Titania is the largest moon of Uranus, and it rotates the same speed as Uranus, due to because it's tidally locked to Uranus. Oberon is the second largest moon of Uranus, and it's the reddest of Uranian moons. And it's also the most heavily cratered Uranian moon. Ariel is the brightest moon of Uranus. Umbriel is the darkest moon of Uranus. And Cordelia and Ophelia are shepherd moons of Uranus, which means they orbit around the ring system. 
Miranda is the fifth largest moon of Uranus, and this moon has cracks 12 times steeper than the Grand Canyon. Next is Neptune. Neptune has 16 moons, and Triton is the largest moon of Neptune. Triton orbits Neptune backwards in retrograde. Triton is a dwarf planet that got captured by Neptune's gravity. Triton has the same atmosphere as Pluto, the same composition as Pluto. They're pretty much like identical twins. So if Triton was still alongside Pluto, it would be the largest dwarf planet. Nereid is the third largest Neptunian moon. Its orbit is extremely weird, where it gets really close to Neptune and then really far from Neptune. And Proteus can only be found by Voyager 2 because it's one of the darkest things in the solar system. And Hippocamp is the smallest known Neptunian moon to have an official name. Next is the dwarf planets. First is Ceres. Ceres actually doesn't have any moons. Next is Pluto. Pluto has at least five moons. Its largest moon, Charon, is half the size of Pluto, and because of that, they're called a binary dwarf planet. That red cap on Charon is called mortar, which is methane gas stolen from Pluto's atmosphere. Hydra is Pluto's outermost moon, and Kerberos, Nix, and Styx were found by the Hubble telescope and uh, James Webb telescope because they're small and oddly shaped. Next is Haumea. It has two moons, which are named after um, Hawaiian mythology. Namak is the smaller inner moon. Hiaka is the larger outer moon of Haumea. Next is Makimaki. Makimaki's moon is MK2. It's very hard to find because it's 1,300 times more faint than Makimaki. Next is Eries. Dysnomia is a red-colored moon. And just like Pluto and Charon, it's a binary dwarf planet with Eries. Now are some dwarf planet candidates. First is Orcus. Vanth is red unlike Orcus, so it's probably a captured Kuiper Belt object. Next is Quarer. Waywat has an eccentric orbit around Quarer. Next is Gunhornima. It has a small moon, Goaiku, which is one of the rest TNOs discovered. Next is Varuna. It might have a moon named Varuna 1 because of light fluctuations. Next is 2003 AZ84. This is believed because it rotates slow compared to other egged objects, which is probably caused by the moon. Next is 2013 FY27. Its satellite was found in 2018. Next is Varda. Varda and Ilmare are named after Tolkien characters. Next is Sedna. Sedna actually has no moons. Next is Huya. Huya's one moon is actually quite large compared to it. Next is Salacia. Actaea orbits Salacia every five and a half days. The last one is Gong Gong. Gong Gong's one moon, Shang Lu, along with Gong Gong, are named after Chinese mythology. And just for kicks, we'll go for Planet Nine. We don't have evidence of finding moons because this planet is only hypothetical. Now we're going to go over some asteroids. First asteroid is Ida. Ida was actually the first asteroid discovered to have a moon, and its moon dactyl is only about a mile wide in diameter. Next is Didymus. The moon Dimorphmos was actually affected on its orbit by the dark spacecraft. Next is Florence. Florence has two moons. The inner moon orbits it every eight hours. The outer one orbits it roughly every 22 to 27 hours. Next is Sylvia. Romulus is Sylvia's outer larger moon, and Remus is the inner smaller one. Next is 1994 CC. This asteroid is tiny, but its moons are even tinier. Their names are Beta and Gamma. Next is Electra. This massive asteroid is the first quadruple asteroid, which means it has three moons orbiting around it. Next is Cleopatra. They're named after the two daughters of the famous queen in Egypt, Cleopatra. Cleosline and Alexilios are the names of the two moons. Hope you enjoyed this moon video. But just so you know, we can't go over all of them yet because... There might be some more that are found in the outer planets, and there are over 500 moons orbiting asteroids in our solar system. 
And did you know that rarely some comets can have moons? So we'll go over that in the future.